When we make a transaction on the blockchain, understand that there are only three types of transactions we can make. It's what I refer to as the onion model of blockchain. And we're gonna start off with the very outer layer of that onion, the thing that most people are familiar with when they get into blockchain, uh, the thing we do all the time when we trade cryptocurrency back and forth. That is two or more parties coming together and using the blockchain to record an announcement of the exchange of monetary value. So we might use blockchain to record the fact that I paid you three Bitcoin for your used car, or I paid you 12 blockchain for your vacation home. Um, this is the model that many of us start off with in blockchain. And again, it's the one that's most familiar and gets talked about the most right now. But if we peel away that outer layer and we take away the idea of a monetary transaction or exchange, well, then we're left with two or more parties using blockchain to record an important announcement. And we see many valid use cases around this. Uh, let's say that I go to the doctor for my annual physical. Uh, my doctor checks me out and he says, hey Chris, I want to put you on a new prescription for XYZ. Well, maybe we're keeping our medical information on the blockchain. And so my doctor and I both agree that's a pretty good thing to add to my medical record. In this case, we still need two or more parties because it's very important that I as a patient don't have the ability to go and update my own medical record without a licensed medical professional involved. And it's also equally important that my doctor is not able to update my medical record without my consent or permission. And so that's two or more parties coming together, recording an important announcement or important data point, but nowhere in that example has money or anything of monetary value exchanged hands. Now, if we peel away the very last layer, uh, you can take away this idea of having to have two or more parties. And what we're left with is just a single party announcing an important or significant event. And this is the simplest type of blockchain transaction and also the most powerful. So if we think about blockchain, perhaps for managing a supply chain scenario, uh, we might have a grower of organic produce announce or commit a record to the blockchain that says they've planted a crop. And we might have an organic pesticide company come and treat that organic produce. We still have a single organization or single entity making the announcement of something they did. And this is really the hard of blockchain. When you understand that, it becomes really easy to understand where smart contracts fit in. And smart contracts are just computer code, they're codified logic that we can use to respond to any kind of event that gets captured on the blockchain. Um, so in that organic produce example, if I want to notify someone when that fresh produce has been treated with organic pesticide, so I can create traceability for the end consumer, well, I might have a smart contract that manages that, that defines the rules and the steps that get taken when that particular type of event occurs. And so this is all smart contracts are. Uh, there's oftentimes a misconception when people hear the word contract, that they think of a legally binding agreement between two or more parties. That's not necessarily the case. Um, smart contracts don't have to be legally binding and they don't have to involve multiple parties. In fact, if you come from a programming or a development background, you can think of a smart contract easily enough as a class. Um, if you're not a programmer or don't come from a developing background, you can just think of a smart contract as a set of rules that get executed every time a certain type of event happens. And this is where the real power in blockchain comes in, that not only do we have a permanent, unchangeable record of all the different events that have occurred, um, we can also write computer code um, very, very non-subjective computer code that defines exactly how that process is going to be managed and what steps are going to be taken when that event occurs. And this allows us to ensure process consistency. Um, it allows us to ensure that processes that are normally fulfilled by intermediaries or middlemen um, can now be satisfied on their own without the need for human intervention. And this leads to much more lean and efficient organizations and way of organizing 
organizing human effort. Um, so when you hear smart contract, just think about computer code that you write to respond to certain types of significant events. Uh, if you've ever worked with workflow or business process automation or management tools, uh, you can think of smart contracts as just being another workflow tool, albeit one that has the power to work with money. Um, so don't get too intimidated when you hear smart contracts and don't get too caught up in the language. While they sometimes may be legally binding, they're not necessarily legally binding in the same way a true contract is. They're just a way for us to bake our own logic into blockchain solutions to ensure that consistency of execution.